with the, the next uh, budget for the next year activities. Um, work, uh, work package three is the light blue one with uh, its uh, three tasks. So I, I think you're fully in line with activities because actually your first deliverables is due later on. Uh, but uh, I think that uh, thanks to, to the work that you are all carrying out uh, in preparing the reviews and so on, um, I, I think you are fully in line with the, with the activities. OK, so um, that is very good. Um, in fact, uh, the first deliverable for uh, um, uh, work package three is actually a review. So you're preparing more than one. So I think this is uh, um, this is even better. Uh, also, um, yeah, so here you can see the list of deliverables and you can see that uh, uh, the first one is uh, uh, a review on the best routines and approaches to quantify plant irrigation needs based on monitoring plant water status, which I, th I think is pretty much in line with what you are doing uh, in all the reviews, in the different reviews that are uh, um, that are under preparation. Uh, month 33 is anyway ahead in the third year, so uh, you still have time. Um, then uh, there is another deliverable, which is uh, uh, 3.2, uh, which might be uh, more a focus of discussion for this morning because uh, talking with Martin, um, he wanted to anticipate uh, this uh, activity to the third year, so actually to to the next uh, the upcoming months uh, and to the next year. And the next activity is uh, uh, a, a workshop on precision irrigation with the proceeding. So a workshop open to scientists and to stakeholders with the uh, proceeding. So basically, uh, we can discuss uh, several options about this. Um, and um, yeah, so I, I think uh, that uh, the discussion of this morning can be more focused on that. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, basically, um, with the core group and with the management committee, uh, we are uh, starting now to plan uh, the, the budget breakdown for the activities in 2025. This year, uh, we got uh, a little bit more money than next year, than, than last year. So we got uh, 174 thousand euros uh, from uh, uh, and this is a recent news that we got from uh, uh, from the cost association and uh, now by the end of September we are asked to prepare the next uh, work and budget plan um, of course uh, um, uh, yeah there are activities that uh, we we have to do because for example if we go back to this plan, uh, if you can see, um, we there are like uh, workshop planned uh, during the whole period of uh, of the action, as well as uh, um, ITS, which stands for International Training Schools. And as you may remember, we had one training school in May in Ghent. Uh, which is one, but then uh, it would be good to have a second one uh, also next year. So in our plans, uh, we need to include uh, a training school. So, so far, uh, regarding the activities that we are planning for uh, the next year, uh, we are scheduling an annual meeting in Greece, uh, a workshop and a training school. Then, of course, based on budget availability, we can also include further activities, of course, money for short term scientific mission and uh, all the activities that we are used to. And um, usually um, at the beginning of the year, like in February, March, uh, it happens that uh, um, we discover that they assign us more money, <laughs> something like uh, 30, 40,000. 
euros, so we might even have more money to do more activities, and that is due to the money left uh, from other cost actions that uh, after the closure of the year, it has not been spent. So uh, usually cost association reallocate that money to the current cost actions. And, uh, and, uh, and uh, in the last two years, for example, uh, we got uh, 30, 40,000 euros more than what was expected. So that can allow more activities, of course. And that is also why we, we had the chance to organize this meeting that you are joining now, <laughs> because of course we didn't plan it at the beginning, but uh, we we could uh, afford it because uh, because of this top up. So um, yeah, just uh, an update on a discussion that we had uh, within the core group. So uh, so far, if you remember uh, during the last MC meeting uh, in Seville. Um, George Manganaris uh, uh, took over the, um, the responsibility to organize the next annual meeting. And uh, the question was open whether it would have been in Cyprus or in Greece, if you remember, if, uh, if the, some of you who were in the MC meeting remember. Uh, and uh, finally, um, he decided to hold it in Greece. Uh, and that is because in Greece, uh, um, there will be many more chances to involve uh, um, agricultural stakeholders uh, um, and also to see uh, horticultural fields and the industry in general. Um, the region will be close to Thessaloniki in Naosa, uh, which is uh, um, an important uh, fruit producing regions uh, with many stakeholders uh, um, active uh, also and uh, also facing irrigation pro problems. So that is a nice place also to, to have the annual meeting and, uh, um, and, and to meet and to also meet with the, with the stakeholders. Um, probably the week will be the week of June 16, um, June 16, 17, 18, that, that week, I think. It, uh, the idea of George was to start uh, on, uh, um, on um, yeah, on, on Monday, June 16, uh, until uh, uh, June 18, something like that. Uh, including uh, also, of course, uh, field uh, field visits. Um, of, anyway, the, the dates uh, needs to to be confirmed. So this is just uh, just an hypothesis. Um, and also, as I was saying, uh, we have the budget to organize a workshop. Uh, we still have to decide the location for this workshop. It can be, for example, uh, one hypothesis was Serbia, because uh, during the last MC meeting, Serbia also candid was candidated to organize the next annual meeting. So since we are doing the next annual meeting in Greece, then maybe we can do a workshop in Serbia. And then uh, we should also organize a training school, uh, but for this uh, we don't have any, let's say, any, any proposal yet. Uh, actually, um, we have a sort of a proposal for the, for, the, um, for the topic and the subject of the training school, because uh, um, the training school on uh, sensors and modeling that was organized by Cathy uh, was really, really uh, had a really, really a lot of candidates, and uh, we couldn't really accept them all. Um, so we had to accept all, almost half the people who applied, and therefore we were thinking to sort of uh, um, um, not not really repropose a similar training school, but. Uh, um, stay on on similar on a similar topics. For example, uh, going instead of going from sensors to models, uh, now uh, maybe doing the next step and also uh, addressing uh, uh, use of sensors and models for implementing irrigation in the field. So that could be a good topic and 
actually it is a topic that is highly related to working group uh, three. So um, yeah, this this is this is the situation. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot to decide yet. We will have um, in a couple of in 20 days, more or less, uh, um, another MC meeting, management committee meeting to um, take some decisions. So it is very good that uh, we have this discussion this morning because uh, that will represent uh, a good input uh, for uh, for whatever we decide. I mean, as you can as you can understand. Uh, uh, in in uh, in projects and this like especially in cost actions, uh, whatever we decide needs to have uh, active people then organizing things and also let's say taking care of of uh, of uh, leading activities and uh, um, and so yeah your proposals in this uh, will be extremely important because I think that. Um, uh, also in the logic let's say of of the of the proposal of the project uh, the, the the irrigation part is coming around the middle of the project so where we are now and and so after addressing sensors and model of course we still need to work on sensors and models but uh, it's really time to start uh, talking more about irrigation strategies so yeah, mm, your inputs in this are extremely uh, precious. And uh, yeah, talking with Martin uh, regarding the um, the workshop on uh, irrigation, um, uh, I open a close a parenthesis. Of course, whatever you see here. <laughs> it's not so strict. So uh, cost actions are not so strict like uh, European projects. So actually, if we want to change a little bit the focus of these deliverables, that is not that will not be a problem. So uh, it can be irrigation in general. It can be deficit irrigation. It can be whatever you think it is uh, uh, useful. So, um, as I was saying, Martin wanted um, to, to, to organize this uh, um, next year. And uh, yeah, possibilities are to organize this uh, uh, as the workshop, as a separate workshop, or for example, to take the chance of the annual meeting increase in order to open the meeting in Greece to other scientists and other stakeholders in order to join the cost action in a workshop. So maybe the annual meeting in Greece, instead of being only for uh, uh, fruit cruise members, we, it can be for fruit cruise members the first uh, day and a half. And then maybe the second day, the third day can be a workshop open to the industry, to other scientists, for example. And uh, we can decide or you can decide whether to open it to, for example, abstract submissions or to invite speakers. Um, this is also a possibility. Or you can choose to organize it as a separate workshop or for example, to join it to other initiatives at European level that, that can happen. I'm not aware actually of uh, big, big initiatives in 2025 uh, around Europe, like I ISHS congresses or uh, like we had last year, the European Horticultural Congress. But maybe you are aware of some important event that, I mean, we can join it. Um, yeah, so that's the situation so far. Um, if you have any questions, just ask me and uh, for if I missed some details, um, especially I see there Alon and uh, also Pasquale. I, I think I saw Pasquale, maybe not. Are you there, Pasquale? No. Uh, Anyway, um, if uh, like uh, members of the core groups are there, of course, feel free to uh, add any any comment on this. 
Ah, no, it's not Pasquale, sorry. <laughs> Okay, so the floor is yours. <laughs> okay, so anyone has some, some comments to this? Or? I think uh, for the workshop uh, with Martin, I think uh, we can uh, uh, organize uh, this workshop in Prague or in uh, Martin Institute or even in my institute. Uh, we will talk about Martin. Uh, I was discussing with him last year and uh, uh, we were kind of, you know, uh, uh, talking about this, but I uh, still nothing is possible. But we will definitely, uh, I will be very happy to be a part and to collaborate with Martin uh, for organizing this workshop. Okay, so anyone else has something? It's uh, Kumud Bandhu Mishra. I'm second uh, uh, MC member from Czech Republic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I remember you. Thank you, Kumud. Uh, thank you for the offer. So then uh, I understand you already exchanged with Martin, and that is uh, for sure a good possibility. Um, yeah, you should also, of course, involve the industry. I mean, whenever we Wherever we decide to organize this workshop, uh, we definitely need uh, a strong industry around. Otherwise, it will not be successful. So, uh, and also maybe uh, some uh, uh, fields to, to see and so on. Um, also, another comment on this uh, is that uh, um, uh, Budget-wise, so considering uh, the money available, um, uh, when we organize workshops uh, as a single event, so not really, um, let's say, uh, together with an annual meeting or when, when, together with, with an, an MC meeting, then uh, we, we cannot invite uh, uh, 60 or 70 people from the action. So we have the budget to invite 60, 70 people from the action once in a year. All the other events, uh, of course, uh, cannot be uh, of this, cannot invite, cannot foresee the invitation for this amount of people. So in, an, um, in the budget for a workshop, we can invite uh, something like 15, 20 people, uh, mainly speakers, okay? So we can cover speakers. So uh, hopefully the workshops should be, should be self-sustained in terms of participation. Like the annual meeting is always successful. Because, uh, of course, we invite 60, 70 people, and so we do have a big participation starting from people uh, that, that are from the construction. But in workshop, we cannot, because it's like uh, the budget for an annual meeting is around 90,000 euros, more or less, uh, 80, 90,000 euros, so it, we can do it once in a year. Uh, so for the workshop, then, as I was saying, uh, we can invite uh, less people. And, uh, and so, of course, we need to be careful and organize it in a place where there can be participation anyway. You know? So it can be open and of interest for the industry. So if you think that is the case, then um, I think it might be a good idea. If, if not, uh, we need to be careful in this. I think we will discuss with Martin and uh, maybe we will come up with some ideas. Uh, I think we have a strong presence of industry in the Czech Republic. Uh, uh, from instrumentation point of view, we have very strong put on system instruments, you know, for physiological measurements. Uh, uh, they are based in Brno and uh, uh, I'm sure Martin must be knowing about, you know, the, the, the other industries related to fruit crops and uh, so I think we will discuss and we may come up with some ideas. Okay. Is there any other proposal? Uh, yeah, I, I don't have a proposal. I don't have a proposal, but I suggest that we talk about the the content uh, of what we want to do with the the workshop before we talk about the procedures and the technicalities. 
because it might change where and how and how many people and who we invite and that kind of thing. I think we should really talk about what what kind of meeting we want to have to take advantage of it. Which questions do we want to ask and answer within that meeting? It's our chance to be to have a science, more scientific orientation and open it up to a bigger uh, number of people within the within the larger community of irrigation. Do we want to have an, something similar to the ISHS irrigation of horticultural crops meetings that happen once every four years and have it, it will be in between and, and have something similar like that and have it be general irrigation of horticultural crops and invite people to do it or do we want to focus more? And I think we should take advantage today with this community to get up ideas and opinions. What would you like to see in that kind of a small conference with people like us coming together? What what could we do to have something different and good? The ISHS conference is in 26. So another year, yeah. But it's in Australia. Australia, so we'll see how people that's It's not, not here. Yeah. <laughs> And the last one was in South Africa, and yeah. some of us were there, but not all of us also. Well, they're, they're very good meetings, right? Yeah. Uh, you know, highly recommended for everyone to try to get there. But it means that content-wise might be a little good close. to concentrate on an aspect which is not very much in the center of a big one. So let's... Yeah. Let's get some ideas in, the, in those directions. What what do people think? What what would we benefit from concentrating on in that kind of a meeting? Uh, just uh, an idea like what I feel that you know this community maybe this group uh, lack uh, you know uh, better understanding of physiological aspects of the irrigation you know. Uh, uh, at leaf level, for example, uh, because uh, remote sensing uh, instruments do, uh, people are using, but I see, you know, people lack, uh, there is a gap, uh, and probably uh, uh, with uh, uh, combining physiological and then irrigation aspect of fruits, probably we, we could bridge that gap. Okay. <laughs> so just an idea. Severe droughts, like uh, not regular droughts, but those that can like threaten not only the production but the the continuity of the industry, like those extreme events that can have like a huge impact, or maybe a carryover effect, not just for that season, but for the continuity of like in some regions moving from rain path to irrigation, because like in winery, for example, a lot of areas that they never thought that they need irrigation as a regular basis. Now they they feel that that's the only way to go on. And similarly, other fruit trees, like in the Mediterranean region, at least in Catalonia, that was or that is a huge thing. Like a lot of areas that they never thought that water was going to be a huge problem. Last year, they they were scared of maybe they were not going to be able to produce fruit anymore, at least with those conditions. So maybe like talking about like that idea of how irrigation needs to be, maybe like a, not a continuous irrigation, but like when to apply that water to, to survive, yeah, to continue producing. Maybe cliche, but we could call it something like irrigation to address climate change for fruit tree crops yeah right to then make it specific enough and and cover those those yeah. topics another thing that might be included is the interaction with heat waves uh, yeah how you manage heat yeah. waves yeah that's why like climate change instead of yeah, crowds yeah, so yeah. yeah the increase of the transpiration like there's less water available that combination. I have another proposal, but it has nothing to do with Good. physiology. Or, oh, cool. I don't know if it would be in line, but uh, my feeling is that uh, in the decision support system, um, 
would you for uh, maybe something related to how to translate scientific results to the industry and how to implement this decision support system to be attractive for the growers because sometimes we feel like there is a huge gap between us and the industry and uh, I think that we need to work in that direction on how to communicate and how to create things that are attractive for the but I, but I don't know if to uh, encourage the uh, the growers to use it on like a mass, not mass, but uh, it's nowadays this uh, climate. Uh, Sometimes yeah. you, you you develop very nice decision support system that work pretty well, but yeah. they are not user friendly. Yeah. They are not going to use it. So maybe some things I in guess that direction. Or... Mobile application. They yeah, but be, not the application maybe. itself. I'm talking mm -hmm. more in the broad sense that making something that works, but also it's user friendly and it's easy to use. It doesn't require that many parameters, how to deal with uh, this um, balance between um, precision and yeah. uh, time to uh, require to run the, the models and everything. Um, maybe also the message, like which is the final, which is like maybe they prefer to irrigate like in liters, like the timing, like, yeah. What is the farmer expect? Like, which is the final? Yes, also that's important. Yeah. But isn't it too much like in, in which he, uh, working group four and not number the working group three? Yeah. The I workshop don't think we is are, independent. I don't think workshops. we are. The workshop's independent. Work, uh, working group three is, has expressed interest from the beginning to have one about irrigation mm -hmm. topics. Yeah. I don't think we have any problem combining. Yeah the yeah. working groups yeah. and working together no, no. there's so much overlap yeah, from yeah. all of the working groups in the whole cost section that which is what's nice about it by the way that we don't have problems redefining or or doing something if that's what people yeah want the that topic i think is super interesting it's a little more technical we'll end up bringing in a lot of the industry right because those are the people who are working and either succeeding or failing on on these topics and maybe a little less science and if we really want it to be more scientific and to have a proceeding come out of it then it may not be yeah that's true but if it's what we want to do we can drop the proceedings we can change it to something else right mm -hmm. right because it's as the person in charge of work group four it's super interesting right? <laughs> And we're thinking about those things all the time. And the more we can delve into it and, and get into it, the, the better we won't solve the problems, right? With the workshop. Yeah. Right. We, we won't make people start using decision support systems. Martin, you don't have to read the book. It's the same thing. 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 But I think we should continue. Someone has a microphone on. Yeah. And if you want to talk, please. <laughs> um, so let's collect these. I'm collecting these things. I'll be in touch with Martin about it because it's really his initiative right now. And we'll, we'll, and then we can make some decision either within the working groups or within the, the cost action about, about the topic. But I, just, I don't care more. I think. They're all good so far. What do you think, Brunella? Yeah, um, I, I, I think you raised a good point of uh, discussing the contents. So uh, that's that's yeah. very important. Um, so yeah, I I, I agree. Anyway, we won't make this decision today either, but we can carry it on. Yes, time to think about it. Yeah. I don't know. Is the I don't remember who proposed to do the annual meeting in Greece, but um, is he online or should no, he? George George isn't with us, but he's open. If we want to combine it with that meeting and yeah, 
this, then he'll he'll make it happen. George makes things happen, <laughs> right? So, no, it's so and he has venues and he has relevant and industry and stakeholders <laughs> there. Um, but that would be the, the nice aspect because um, first of all, you already have a number, a great number of people there. Um, if we have a separate workshop, then as Brunella says, we can invite 15, 80, 20 people, something around there. Yeah. And to get the additional ones that we need to make the workshop worthwhile, they have to take. that is hard work. That is very hard work. Um, so if it then basically comes back to a smaller food cruise meeting, and that's all, yeah. and it's not that good. So you really need additional people coming in. And uh, I mean, I, I personally, from, from terms of content, I was thinking along that line as well. But I also like very much the idea of getting a sort of climate change, whatever mm -hmm. sort of critical periods concentrate. What do you do? Um, in Germany, we even discuss um, we have to cover from far too much rain and floods up to absolute drought. So how do you, you uh, deal with these extremes? It goes in both directions. Yeah. So it, it would be very interesting um, to as a topic. And we don't need to decide now, but I think those are two potential topics I, I would say are, are very interesting. But exactly if, you, if we take that one here on the decision support systems, and I think you need the industry there, you need people to discuss it with them to make it worthwhile. And that is not easy to arrange. That's just tricky. The best you do, I, I would best be. you can do is do it well locally, right? Wherever you're holding it, you manage to get the right people, and then you maybe get a few representatives of other places. But because those things are are local centric, right? Yep. The, the locality is important in how they work and how they get out there. I think doing it globally would be, I mean, be very hard. Yes, Bartolomeo, you can go on. Yes, yes. Uh, Bartolomeo, you had something no, to say? Yeah. 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 Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Thank you and hello everyone also today. And um, I um, I agree with the idea to combine the workshop with the annual meeting because uh, uh, in this way, uh, of course, uh, we reduce the energy uh, probably, but we can uh, put a different layer and uh, uh, aims of uh, this meeting. We can uh, create a workshop dedicated to stakeholder, farmer, uh, or technician and uh, choose uh, some subject to transfer to start to transfer to the to the this technician this uh, um, in the territory and then if we uh, think that uh, are also interesting for a, a scientist to have an upgrade on uh, some subject we can uh, dedicate some work uh, to this subject, so uh, in, in in the same uh, uh, in the same moment that we can uh, choose uh, what we would like to do and prepare well uh, the um, the meeting and the workshop. Also, another thing uh, uh, is uh, probably combine uh, uh, people that work in different uh, work package, uh, probably uh, or working group, probably. Uh, would be better in order, you know, to maximize uh, uh, exchange work that have been done till now, and also to try to discuss as we do in an annual meeting, uh, of course. 
I think in this way, uh, we can also organize a workshop uh, dedicated to, to working group three, uh, of course, uh, in another country, but um, I like the idea to, to, to put it together and uh, probably <clears throat> take one more day and uh, trying to go in the field and uh, trying to uh, start to uh, define some particular crop or some particular problem uh, in order to uh, transfer uh, everything <clears throat> that is ready from a different working group. I like this idea, but yeah, just idea to share with you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, I also think it's it's a good idea to to make these two events uh, at one place for uh, it would be better even with, uh, from from the point of view that Brunella talked about. Also, we would like to welcome you back in Czech Republic and our institute. Mm -hmm. But uh, <laughs> yes, I I understand that this this way might would be way uh, or more effective and and I think it's it's a good idea. I will uh, talk to Martin and uh, I will give him the notes that I made uh, today, and uh, then we can we can make some decision. Or if you have some uh, some other ideas, of course you can send this to me or to Martin or to some someone from the from the cost action. And uh, of course, there is the doors are open for for new ideas. So I think it's yeah, really true. great. Yeah. Um. Yeah. In general, yeah. I. I probably. Yeah. As as I was anticipating before, I also like the idea of the joint meeting for the all the reasons that you said. Um. Uh, I don't know if you want to discuss a little bit more possibilities for uh, the topic to address, but another thing that we should like try to figure out is the proceedings um in a way i mean we we, we wrote we would have produced proceedings but uh, um i mean we should find a way that is uh, let's say useful for everybody that is a benefit for our community so we we don't need to do it just because we have to but we should think about uh, any possible, let's say, formats that could um, that could enrich uh, us, that could be useful for all of us. Like, for example, in Working Group 1, um, they have um, launched recently a special issue uh, in Scienza Horticulture on uh, plant sensors. Um, and uh, I think that is... Uh, that is very nice and also because uh, it is an opportunity for the community to have some uh, paper published uh, regardless of uh, of the action so maybe we should find some uh, maybe similar let's say um, format or uh, some something that can be useful for all of us at the beginning of the action for example i was contacted by cabi uh, you know, the company, the editor company that is uh, uh, producing, uh, that is uh, uh, publishing uh, all the books on uh, the single species. So there are almost books uh, on every crop uh, published from uh, uh, CABI, so C-A-B-I. Um, and uh, well, actually, I told I told this lady that was two years ago, I told her, well, <laughs> Uh, let us think about that uh, in the in the course of the project because of course uh, uh, writing a book is uh, extremely a big a super big effort and I'm not sure that we can make it uh, and also I I told her we are just at the beginning we don't even start it so um, I, I of course I cannot uh, tell you anything now but that was another proposal that I got you know so. Yeah, that, I mean, is on the table together with special issues, together with um, 
ACTA horticulture proceedings. I know they are open at ISHS. They're open to publish proceedings from, uh, from, uh, from conferences or meetings that are not strictly organized by them. For example, for example, in, in Eufrin, um, the working group on thinning always publish uh, proceedings after their meeting on ISHS, so on the Act of Horticulture. That is also a possibility. The costs are very high. So this and the time, I mean, we were discussing this in the core group and the, the timing for publications are also very long and uh, you know, but that's another possibility on the table. So, um, yeah, just uh, let's also think about uh, this possibility because, of course, uh, I mean, June, if we decide to do it in June, this big conference, then, uh, I mean, there are still several months, but time flies. So it's good to start thinking also about how we want to organize for for the proceedings, we can maybe ask uh, a journal to to collect uh, some some keynote uh, speech that we invite in this workshop, in this conference. Yeah, there are many, many, many possibilities. I didn't even think about all of them. So, any ideas? I think so. I think so that we can uh, try to invite uh, some company uh, that uh, could uh, put money to funding or several companies to publish uh, uh, the the conference abstract or the conference proceedings. I don't know. Maybe an option. Asking for sponsors is always a good idea. Um, so thanks, thanks for for this uh, for this idea. Uh, I'm I'm sure that George has already uh, a very good network on that on that regard because he's used to organize conferences. He did the pitch conference. He did other meetings uh, there. So he has already contacts with industries and sponsors, and uh, and we also have our network within the cost action. What I think is that uh, we don't just have to publish uh, or to print paper. Uh, I mean, we need to find a way that is uh, useful, that is that is um, yeah useful for for all of us, especially especially maybe for uh, our young researchers who might contribute. So. Brunella, um, hi. <laughs> Uh, Hi, Alpha. Just, how are you? Just a question. Um, your proposal for uh, Acta Horticulture. Um, so it will not be Acta Horticulture. So I I suppose that we are uh, planning to invite other other scientists from several countries. No. Because the proceeding is a good idea to be a short paper. Otherwise, for CABI or a special issue, we are asking to the people to 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 publish something. If I can say it, much more strong. But uh, when we ask, just um, it's like extending abstract or or small paper for proceeding. It could be easier for them. For us and for them also, because we have very short time to do it. If we are thinking about special issue, so it will take it takes time, and we have all these reviews to to be published also. So it's a little bit. I don't know. It's uh, just I'm thinking uh, loud. Okay. Can I also say something? Good morning, everybody. Um, well, taking the the thing that Olfa said, I think the proceedings can be a, a best way to approach different types of of uh, segments in the 
in our sector, so from from the academy to the industry, because the proceeding is more uh, practical language, less deep than a, a more complement, more 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 complete document, and maybe the proceedings and the the, the workshop can include from the the basic or more or less basic uh, plant physiology still techniques and modeling, and then maybe a part of knowledge transfer because we already talked this today. And I think also in Europe, there has been also programs related to this. They are very or highly focused on the knowledge transfer or peer-to-peer -peer learning. That uh, it was Nefertiti program, for example, that finished last, last year. So maybe if the workshop could handle this, uh, this uh, topics maybe could be also interested not only for science but also for the industry for consultants and also for policy other thing that we are talking we talk about irrigation also maybe involving people from the the water sector or water policy sector could be also interesting in this because we are also dependent on the rules and legislation each country we are in europe but each country and region has differences and maybe it can be also a possibility to enrich the, the the topics discussed on the workshop. Okay, thank you. Any other ideas or comments? <coughs> Okay, so that's uh, another topic for for discussion and for for some ideas that you will find that would be effective for for this uh, event. So please try to figure how it could be uh, held, and yeah, that there will be some discussion in in future about about this event and about. Uh, uh, the proceedings or some some other results. Yeah, regarding the proceedings and the timing, um, I mean, we don't have to publish them before the meeting. So we can also take the time after the meeting. For example, uh, considering also what Alpha said, um, uh, yeah, I mean, if uh, some of our young researchers is willing to contribute and to maybe publish an article mm -hmm. uh, alone or in collaboration or as a as, as a follow up of uh, his or her contribution to to the conference to the workshop, then uh, um, yeah, it might be really. A bigger benefit for him to have a publication rather than uh, maybe uh, let's say um, a collection of, of abstracts. Um, it's it's really something we are really free because because um, um, yeah we we can even publish uh, like a collection of abstracts uh, in our website. So just to give you an idea of the range of options that we have. So uh, the the thing is that uh, we really need to do something that is good for us for the community that moves a little bit ahead uh, the community that is useful. Uh, it's not just that we have to do something. For for the benefit of cost association, and that's it. That that's the message, the main message, I think. So so I, I'm I'm not sure. I, usually, book of abstracts are something that uh, you just have a look during the conference or after the conference, and then you forget. <laughs> um, that's at least my experience, but uh, yeah, um, of course, that's the easiest thing to, to do. Um, I think it still depends on the topic we choose, what will be the correct way to publish. 
and and all and we see the whole list of possibilities and we could again if we would go more scientific and people would have real articles to to submit a special issue could be that and that doesn't omit <coughs> the opportunity to self publish an extended abstract book by ourselves within the yeah. community i think today we could do that without too much effort and and have it online and get and and get people to see it right so you don't get cited for it the same way but you also don't have the same expectations for the kind of of writing and and reviewing of them right so and we can make that anything from a paragraph to, to four or six pages right uh, an extended abstract that in order to make it a little more interesting but again i think we should first Zoom in and 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 be committed to a topic, then develop the topic and see how we can best cover it and and handle it. Um, there's certainly a general feeling that combining it with the with the annual meeting is a good idea. Is yeah. what I get a sense of. So yeah. we'll we'll put that across to to Martin uh, and people. But let's. Because the, the other things we need to do, and we need to do them fast, because if we want to invite people from outside the community to join us, either as invited speakers or as, as participants, where it's already less than a year, people's calendars start to, to fill up pretty fast. So, so I think we should do it very, very soon. Can we make a few topics today and send it to Martin and well, we have now our two and a half topics that I've written down and you've written down. We'll both send them to, to Martin and he can then get a sense uh, of doing it. If people are interested in being part of a more core group for making the planning of that workshop, let us know, let Martin know, because there'll be some committee that will then do the work in both on the scientific part and the technical parts and everyone's of course welcome to yes or if, if you want we can uh, make some online meeting and yeah. discuss it later with, with martin uh, new ideas that you will bring and then then we can choose choose any of or we can make some some voting for for these two or something like that so I will talk to Martin, I will give him the notes and then I think we will find some way or you can send some just just email with uh, some some ideas. Yeah, but at some point, democracy on big scales don't work, doesn't work for this kind of thing. <laughs> um, and there'll be a it'll be Martin, maybe a, a small group around him okay. that will do it. If you want to be part of that small group, let, it, let him know. Right. We need to manage democracy. You <laughs> need a democracy. I guess that this uh, irrigation climate change uh, topic, the, the first one that uh, you yeah. propose, and it's uh, it's it's a nice view because to me it's concrete enough enough to be a workshop, but with enough room to have space for different things. So that might be a good. And also, as you as you point out, it. It's good for the proceedings. And, and I think the, venue, the and may, venue may be good for it too. This yeah. is northern Greece. They have lots of water most of the time mm -hmm. and sometimes don't have yeah. enough. Yeah. So they're really dealing with these yeah. kind of issues of, yes. of, of we have drought now, what do we do? Mm -hmm. Even with crops that they don't irrigate off always or, yeah. or, or, or right? So it's an interesting place to ask yeah. these this questions. Question. They have heat waves, they have this, mm -hmm. and traditionally they haven't been a big irrigation mm -hmm. region. They are a big horticultural region, right? Mm -hmm. So I, I think it's extremely relevant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. And maybe, maybe what Miguel Prado yesterday talked about, the nexus energy water, because in several regions they don't have energy. So sometimes also it's a problem for them. Yeah, that fits too. Yeah, it fits in the. Yeah, that that is very actual. Uh, also, 
um, from the point of view of the organizations and foundations that are uh, funding research. So the topic of uh, uh, water energy nexus uh, uh, and, and food as well <laughs> is, is always very relevant in, um, yeah, in, in funding schemes and in funding programs uh, uh, for research. So that is also a plus. Um, Another another topic that you mentioned before, um, I think it was, I don't remember, maybe uh, Peter, um, extreme events. Mm -hmm. So ir irrigation mm. and the management of extreme events, like, uh, yeah, most of the time extreme droughts. So, for example, in Spain, uh, in Andalusia, talking with Antonio and Virginia, they are trying to let's say, understand what's the minimum survival yeah. <laughs> amount for yeah. olive, uh, as, which is already quite tolerant. So imagine the other crops. Um, but also, for example, here in, in northern Italy, uh, we are lately have experienced floods, you know, so floods problem. So huge amount of waters ruining the soil, ruining actually the, let's say, the, the, the crops. So that's also difficult to, to manage sometimes, excess water. Um, so, yeah, ex extreme events is another, another subtopic that is always related to climate change and irrigation. There is another topic that might fit, and it's a uh, research that was conducted in Australia with uh, Sadras and Marcos Bonada, and it's the lack of winter rain, especially in grapevines or in other uh, perennial crops. So how that affects uh, the budbers and the phenology, and how to manage this lack of irrigation, uh, sorry, this lack of rain or precipitation during winter. That might happen depending on the on the site and on the climate the more the mediterranean time. climate specific yeah, yeah, right? yeah. a lot of us are dealing with those yes. kind of mm -hmm. things yeah. but what we're really getting into is time scales right because the climate change and and perennial horticulture has the whole range of of time scales and we yes. can we can present it like that from what what Ronella just said with the with the events to long term, you know, what happens long term to an orchard that that sees something over time, winters with less rain, uh, uh, with with a long term approach, because it's only the fruit trees that are thinking about about that kind of how long term changes affect a a crop and managing it. So I think we could build it like that, include all of those of yeah. those things. We look for the connection with physiology yeah. for each of it and, and uh, irrigation and, and make that that I suspect that the next ISHS irrigation conference will look a little bit like that too, because that's what so many of us are working on. Mm. But it's relevant and, and interesting. Oh, so yeah. Also, the like uh, hot winters that we are having. Yeah, that was in Sevilla the... this year in January. There were like days of maximum of 20 degrees in January. It was like pretty cool. Yeah, for the chilling environment. Yeah. yeah, the phenology. Yeah, that is also a topic. It's not so related to irrigation, but it's yeah. a topic. Yeah, okay. so we want, we want it so as long. much as possible to keep it water management to irrigation. Yeah. But of course, it's, really it's all connected, right? Yeah. Yeah. Right? Well, yeah. yeah. Maybe yeah. warm fall and like extended season, like maybe before, or, like the leaves were falling mm -hmm. in September, but now in November, you still need to do your Something that we discussed uh, yesterday. Uh, in the thing, uh, review of the grapevine group mm -hmm. and how the link, yeah, the trying to link phenology with all mm -hmm. the irrigation programs and what happens if the phenology is shifted. How mm -hmm. would you proceed with your traditional, let's say, irrigation scheduling? 
I think that all oh, this can be put uh, in first climate change topic. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, yeah, it's uh, all in that topic. Yes. I agree. Because even sometimes you irrigate uh, optimal irrigation, the temperature could make uh, effect depend on the cultivar. I found that, that in black currants. So maybe the first step would be on the first plate. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so we're getting it's, we're getting focused a little bit, right? We seem to have a general idea of making it fruit tree water management climate change, and we'll make a more sexy title than that. that will help uh, Martin to do that. But that's the the choice to combine it with the annual meeting. And then to see to see what we can do. Like there are so many factors, as you know. So uh, first we uh, decided to main topics, and then the subtopics, because there are so many factors. Yeah. Technology. Yeah. Also, the heat. It's called like plasticity, called the climate cross change. change. And we can arrange the uh, irrigation. We can uh, uh, affect by the uh, phenological stages. So uh, there are so many uh, subtopics, I think. Mm -hmm. The main topic mm -hmm. and the subtopics, there are so many. We want the members of our community to want to present in in this, right? To want to come and to want to to present their work, maybe even publish it as a sub things in in special issue or proceedings, right? We we want to engage our people first, and then what we'll do is invite people from outside who are the most relevant and interesting to to come and talk with us. Add and add to it, but. First and foremost, I think we should be looking for what's right for us and, and the people in our community. One thing that, that often happens in, and I'm in the irrigation community since quite a while, and I realize that sometimes tropics come up again. I think of 2018 in Italy, the irrigation conference. Something like that. No. I think, yeah. Ian Goodwin was there and he presented basically how Australia has managed the millennium drought 2000 to 2009. And he had a whole catalog of possible management strategies, basically, which is cost effective, which is something you can reverse and get the ocean back again and things like that. So one, I think it's more, for me, it's more the question, more, more crop specific, what you want to do. But an overall framework of possibilities that you have until the worst one that you rip everything out, then you don't need any irrigation or water anymore. But uh, there's anything in between. But uh, we were talking about the olives, whether these high, super high density plantings are more susceptible to what deficit or not. And this, I think, is, is for me personally, is very interesting. And I see a gap in, in knowledge there. So which crop and what would be the decision in an area, for example, mm -hmm. like Catalonia, you've got a limited amount of water back available. What do you do? Give it to that crop and make a decent crop out of it and forget about everything else. Mm -hmm. Give a little bit to everybody and things like that. So those management strategies, I think, are very interesting. Instead to have broad discussion to bring solutions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I think we found nice solution of, uh, yeah. of this, uh, this thing and uh, 
great. Thank you for your ideas, and I will I will talk to Martin, give, give uh, the notes to him, and you, then uh, the preparation can start for for the next annual meeting and the workshop together. Yeah, thank you, Lenka, for 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 uh, catching up. Um, just another point and another comment to consider. Um, uh, I, I I think we should we should also think about the outputs of our of our workshop. So what's the message or the potential message of the potential results that we want to get, and what's the target audience? Um, I, I think that uh, this uh, this event is an opportunity to match together. Uh, scientists and stakeholders, and this is something that is different from ISHS. So we, we should always keep in mind that uh, somehow we should be different from what ISHS is already doing. Um, and our, let's say, potential is actually this connection with, with stakeholders. And uh, besides stakeholders, we might also want to, um, to invite either as a speakers or as participants, uh, like members of uh, like policymakers or, for example, uh, um, big uh, worldwide organizations like uh, FAO or other initiatives. I know, for example, that uh, um, yeah, in, in some other cost actions, uh, they also try to involve uh, these key people, like uh, from uh, from the Agri, from the Commission, from uh, maybe I don't know, from from you know big stakeholders. Uh, like for example, in our case, it can be Arefl, Copa Cogeca, or uh, uh, yeah, other big stakeholders that to whom we can actually send a message. Okay. So that can be uh, also a possibility to, to keep in mind. Of course, uh, it is regardless of the topic that we choose, because the topic that we are the topics that we are addressing are all uh, super relevant and super important and uh, and super interesting. But yeah, just keeping in mind that uh, we are a little bit different from ISHS and that our target audience might have a different potential, which is a little bit in the middle, also between science and uh, technological transfer, and also policy and research priorities in the future as an output uh, from, from this kind of event. Just sort of a, let's say, general comment on this. Um, I, I don't know if you have any comments on this or ideas. I, in this sense, I think it, if the audience, uh, the target audience will be that broad, but for the policy makers and the stakeholders, I think we shouldn't miss the opportunity to stress out the importance of long term studies and, and we need fundings to that, that to understand the carryover effect of the different irrigation strategies. I just maybe it could be just one session or something like that that uh, just to say, hey guys, we, we really need to do this type of experiments and we need funding to do that more than three year projects. We said we talk about that yesterday after Martin's presentation. That yeah, there is. We are always pressed, uh, pushed to do um, groundbreaking research and there's no much space to do to continue doing the research that needs to be done in the long term. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if if maybe inviting to... those growers that they, I don't know, from those countries that they have been suffering that extreme conditions and how they manage from a practical perspective, like like what they did during that experience during those yeah years that they were. Really bad. Sometimes it's really also if you wanna like be attractive to growers. Sometimes having growers that they can share their experience is also really interesting. Yeah. 
If, if I can add something, I, I also agree with this uh, issue of uh, long-term research and support research. I think maybe from the AIP Agri uh, from the EU Commission, because they are always interesting to have new focus groups, maybe this could be also interesting uh, to to invite or to, to establish any relation with this um, this part of the EU Commission because they are also actively promoting um, uh, important foc well focus groups on on important issues and maybe this is uh, also an issue that uh, EU should be uh, aware of or or that that was my suggestion. Thank you for this suggestion. Um, that's a good idea. I think uh, we can easily invite them. Um, there was in the past a focus group on uh, uh, water management at farm level. Um, me and Diego, we were involved, but that was back in 2015, so long ago. So maybe it's time to promote a new a new focus group, maybe on uh, on a different, a slightly different topic. So maybe we should identify sort of a slightly different topic to suggest. Uh, so to move a little bit forward from what is already there, because if you look at the website, there are still the minutes and the reports uh, of this focus group on uh, water management at farm level. Uh, but yeah, I think we have plenty of room for proposing uh, um, a follow up thematic uh, for, for this discussion. So. Thank you, Miguel, for this suggestion. Um, OK, so yeah, thank you for this discussion. Um, maybe uh, I think uh, I don't know if Lenka, you have uh, other points to discuss, but I, I still have one. Um, I don't know if how is the schedule of the morning and if you still have some time. Yes, we, we have time, so go on, don't, don't hesitate. Yeah. yeah, so basically my last my last point was uh, actually in the in the in the slide here, and that is, as you can see, uh, the training school. So basically we addressed uh, uh, very efficiently and uh, and uh, with the very good discussion, the first two points, because I think we join, we, we are very uh, oriented into joining the workshop into the annual meeting to make it bigger. And uh, we are very close to selecting the topic. But yeah, um, as I was saying, uh, uh, we also we are also planning to organize a training school. And based on the first discussions we had, uh, this training it would be very good if this training school would uh, would cover the the step after the last training school. So uh, starting from let's say sensors and models available and moving to irrigation management management. So, for example, just to give you some practical examples, um, I mean, we can have uh, a set flow sensors installed in, in our orchards. And uh, I mean, how do we uh, move to from the from the set flow sensors data to the actual irrigation amount, how do we move from dendrometers data to the actual irrigation amounts? Um, or very simply, how can we calculate uh, uh, simply a crop evapotranspiration, which is the simplest approach ever, but sometimes it's not uh, so, I mean, we cannot take it for granted always, you know? So, I mean, it's just that, uh, yeah, at a certain point, uh, we are discussing about uh, sensors and tools uh, and models, but then we need to make the connection to the next step, which is uh, what happens in the field. And it would be nice to have a training, a training school addressing this topic. Um, that That's just an idea. Of course, uh, we are open to any other possible suggestions of different topics if you think there are different uh, uh, priorities or if you have different ideas. 
Um, so yeah, and and since uh, working group three is really uh, centered on irrigation, maybe I don't know if some of you might have some ideas or can, for example, volunteer for for hosting the training school. I'm not saying organizing because the organization can be something that we can do together. But um, yeah, like uh, of course we need we need the. Uh, we need a place to, to host it. So, uh, or if you have other idea on the subject, uh, just just you know, I'm just opening opening to to the floor to ideas and suggestions and. Uh, So just to give, why, why, why do you think, just to give you some, uh, um, let's say, some practical information. Um, usually the training school can last uh, like from two to three days. Um, and so that is pretty much free to the side. And uh, it can host uh, like 20, from 15 to 20 to 25 people, depending on, on the budget that we have. Last year, uh, I think we reached uh, uh, more than 25. We were quite close to 30, if I'm not wrong, in, in Cathy's lab. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, but we might have even uh, lower numbers um, and then uh, yeah like uh, we can invite speakers from around the world actually so we can actually choose uh, who we would like to invite uh, it would be nice to have some practical sessions so if for example there are some experimental fields where we can show sensors or where, where we can show examples of translating uh, sensors indication into irrigation scheduling that is good uh so yeah that's i'm just launching <laughs> the discussion um, What, what do you think about the subject, for example? Do you think it's okay or shall we move to something else? Subject is great. For me, it's okay. I find it interesting. <laughs> The host need to be part of the meeting. Or? I think it should be. Did you hear that question, Brunella? No, sorry. Um, the, the audio is not is not always perfect. So sometimes, uh, sorry, I miss some okay. parts of the discussion. I, uh, I'm not sure that uh, some of the colleagues that I work on uh, from the south of Italy are part of the community. But uh, maybe the CHM EM from Bali or uh, Blue Leaf uh, company that they have, uh, that they, they are dealing a lot of with sensors uh, for the irrigation. I don't know if you heard for the Blue Leaf company. Yeah, yeah, I know them. I know Vito very well. Yeah, yeah, we collaborate. Uh, I'm from Bosnia, <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> uh, we, we, we worked with them in smart water project. They could, uh, I think they have capacity to organize uh, kind of like a training school. Uh, I'm just thinking uh, uh, maybe they could show sensors and uh, uh, how they deal or uh, institute, uh, Sikhaim Institute in Bali. Yeah, thank you for the suggestion. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. Uh, it is wise to focus it only on one single company because, uh, I mean, a training school should not be so commercial, let's say. 
Okay. So we should try to be, let's say, as wide as possible concerning the technologies that we are showing. So yeah, so focusing on only one one approach is probably a little bit limiting. Uh, but I mean, um, that's I mean they can even organize it and always open to other approaches, of course. Uh, and uh, as for uh, Chiam in Bari, I don't think we have, I'm not sure we have uh, participants in the action. Members of like uh, people from uh, Chiam uh, join part of the action that I'm not aware, but maybe I'm missing because we are like 250, more than 250. So, you know. <laughs> From my side, Brunella, I'm Andrea. Uh, I really like the idea. Uh, I think could be a nice opportunity because could be a, a follow up from the previous training school, but at the same time could be yeah a standalone training school, of course, on that topic. So it's standalone and interesting from one side, and it's, it is the continuous of the previous one as well. Yeah, like um, the previous one was very specific. And also for the candidate selections, uh, um, we had to focus mostly on people who had, uh, who was already familiar with uh, with sensors data, you know, so, so this could be a little bit more open, probably more, let's say, um, Yeah, also for more more uh, with 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 a topic that is easier to understand, maybe um, also from people that is not so familiar with models. Ornella, can I ask one thing? Uh, also, in the in this training shop uh, training. Uh, Training, <laughs> sorry, Thanks. workshop, training, <laughs> sorry. Uh, um, I, I wonder if there will be also written output of, of, of this, because if we are dealing with methodology, methodology, methodologies and, and uh, practical issues, it, it will be also, or is there an idea of having also any written uh, document after these workshops? Because, because could be interesting. Uh, I know that, of course, it's uh, complex and takes time. But uh, I remember once we participate in a cost action, also in um, in uh, Baliars that was uh, on methodologies applied to grapevine, and uh, that was a book published by Springer, and uh, and sponsored by Cost. And in the book, uh, there was a description of the different uh, methodologies uh, presenting during the, the training school. Oh, that could be possible, of course, and very nice. <laughs> As usual, we need somebody to do it. Um, last year, I'm not sure, but Katie produced a sort of a, a sort of a, a guideline. Um, Asking uh, uh, some of you joined last year training school, and I think Katie provided you with a few pages of summary for the contents. Uh, so yeah, it, it is possible, but of course we need to to dedicate, uh, of course, time to 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 do it, and we should ask maybe the speakers to to write. Uh, something about their contributions. Maybe they have already something ready, you know, about their contribution, and then maybe we can try to put everything together. But yeah, regarding the book, yeah, as I, as I said before, it can actually be probably not related to a training school, but it can be a possibility for the whole action. I, I see it more a broader initiative uh, rather than focused on a single event. So. And, and this is up to us if we want to, let's say, engage in this or not, because of course it's a very, very big commitment 
for all of us. Uh, it's much more than a refuge. <laughs> uh, so you are all engaged in in the reviews now, and uh, you know it takes time. That it's not covered actually uh, from the financial point of view because this is how costs are working, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so so we we need to be careful with with this type of commitments. But yeah, it, it is a possibility, and of course, it's a good idea. Okay, so well, thanks for uh, for inputs on the training school. Uh, we will discuss that also in the management committee. Uh, now that you are here, um, I would like to ask you if you have uh, further suggestions, maybe more in general. I mean, uh, even beyond the uh, working group three, or within working group three, beyond what uh, we have been discussing so far. I mean, uh, we are really open to activities. And uh, we are now in the, um, let's say, in the, in the time to decide how to allocate our budget. So uh, beside the workshop together with the annual meeting, the, let's say, the training schools, uh, do you have any other idea that we can, let's say, propose to the management committee um, uh, that can be useful and nice for the community, either for the working group three community, but also in general for the action? Olfa. <laughs> okay, I have a small uh, suggestion. Uh, the training school could be a training school online. So we can do, for example, for young scientists and also for, uh, for students, some kind of training to analyze images, for example, uh, satellites or drone, so to help them to calculate for example, KC or something like that. I'm saying that like example, or how to manage data from sensors. So it, it can be just online and uh, for one day, two days, and uh, just to help them and help all the groups to, to, to how to manage uh, the data and to be more familiar with the, with the sensors and to know about other sensors also because sometimes we we are working in a group with only one or two type of sensors so to to open a little bit their minds about other type of sensors and other uh, techniques that can could be used for your for their work or for their future or that can help the group in which they belong. Okay, it, just a little <laughs> suggestion. Thank you, Olfa. Actually, Thank you. yeah, I mean, uh, it can be also an evolution of our e-seminars. Uh, the e-seminars initiatives uh, has been going very well, and uh, we now have uh, uh, applications for the next months. Uh, we we'll still have to work on the program and the on the new schedule, but we will release it uh, soon. Uh, but that can also be another nice opportunity because, I mean, uh, training schools can also be shorter than two or three days and can be maybe a couple of afternoons maybe on a specific subjects with the volunteer speakers and, and can be open to a very wide audience in that way. We, also, we have the tools, so that is also a possibility. Of course, we also have the budget to organize one in presence, we think uh, it is useful because, uh, of course, meeting in presence, especially for young researchers, is always very, very important to build their, their connections and their network for their future, let's say, um, yeah, collaborations. So that is always very good. Yeah, that's a good idea. I'll take note of that. Thank you. <laughs> Any well, other? ideas yeah. or initiatives following all of us uh, ideas i think it would be nice for young researchers and it could be linked to all the sensoring thing it's uh 
a workshop workshop or e seminar or something like that on uh, experimental design and statistical analysis uh, for uh, irrigation experiments on two crops. So everything that goes inside that, how to plan your experiment, where to put the sensors to be representative, how to post process the data, what have how to deal with a lack of data in a long-term experiment, all these kind of things. I, I think that could be much interest for uh, not that young. And maybe and maybe the pros and cons of its approach, since yesterday we talked that there's no homogeneity in yeah. the papers that we are, are, are analyzing and all the people, I mean, there's diversity mm -hmm. in managing the irrigation um, irrigation studies, yeah, mm -hmm. in general. Mm -hmm. Nice idea. Yeah, thank you for the ideas. These are, yeah, I, I, I like the, um, the idea of the experimental design and statistical analysis because, uh, yeah, um, sometimes we make mistakes, so <laughs> that's a good point indeed to, to to get a line on a sound science. That is always also our mission. So that's a very one, good point. Yeah, one of the things that uh, we should uh, agree, it's uh, like a common framework, at least in this cost action to what we understand by, that was a discussion yesterday, what we understand by a full irrigation treatment and uh, this type of things. I'm just taking notes, you know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you. Okay. Any other initiatives or ideas? Yeah, in, in the next year, one one thing that we should stress more is also the availability of uh, short-term scientific missions because um, actually that's a very nice and easy tool um, and uh, so far I mean uh, we we were able this year to cover uh, exactly the almost the budget that we had but I mean we didn't have exceeding uh, applications so maybe people within the cost uh, might have the perceptions that uh, it's not so easy to get a short-term scientific mission, but that is not true. I mean, uh, we do have usually room for, for short-term scientific mission, so I would maybe encourage, uh, encourage more our young researchers or also our, uh, let's say, senior researchers to, to take advantage of this tool. Because at the end, uh, what we noticed in the last couple of years is that it's always the same groups uh, who take advantage of that opportunity. So it's always, for example, the group uh, which are closer to the core group. Uh, there's a lot of people coming to my lab, for example. Uh, my people, people from my group going out, but I mean, uh, we, we would love to receive up more applications because uh, so far, we are, we are happy with the applications that we got because we spent uh, 27,000 euros and we got 26 in the budget, which, which is very good because that 1,000 extra comes from uh, um, ITC conference, which, is actually, which went uh, empty, for example. It's another opportunity, ITC conference, that uh, nobody is applying to. And that is a tool that is also very useful because it's like for uh, for going for young researchers from ITC countries. So, for example, uh, Eastern Europe or Portugal or uh, northern Northern African countries to go to uh, conferences. So it's a contribution that the actions provide to go to a conference. But it's not. We never got uh, application. 
or I mean, we got one application, but it was not relevant at all with with the with the topic of the action. So it was on really some other subject. So we couldn't really accept it. But we would love to have more applications because these are good opportunities for our young researchers. So yeah, that's another another point to to stress. Um, and uh, how much money do we have for SDSM? Sorry, uh, how much money do we have for SDSM? The question is, how much funding do we have for uh, SDSM? Uh, we have to decide that usually, uh, every year we allocate 20,000 uh, at the fir at first. And <laughs> then, uh, when we once we receive the top up, so like once we get confirmations that there is extra money left from other cost actions from the previous year, then we, we might get to 26, 27,000. Uh, in the last two years, uh, we have like, we allocated this amount. I think it was 22,000 in the first year and now we, we are already at 27,000. So for, for this year, we are probably, Okay, um, but for next how, year, how many people got them? How many SDM, SDSMs there were? More uh, I think is let me get an email. I, I recently got, uh, um, but it's uh, but people are getting between it, it's a more than 10, it's like 12, 13 people, something like that. So it's uh, uh. It's a couple thousand euros usually, right? Twelve. Uh, twelve. Twelve people. We we were able to fund uh, twelve people more or less in one year, but we could potentially have uh, room for a few more. Also, because we can allocate. I mean, if we have extra money remaining from, for example, the meetings, then we can reallocate it. So it's it's good to have, let's say, more applications. You know, uh, so. Uh, Brunella, can you shortly explain how, how is the procedure to apply for that? I, I'm not so aware. I know that exists that, but is there a, a, a procedure or a, or a document yeah. to describe that? Because it's it, it will help very much if we are not so aware of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, basically, um, first you have to get the contacts with the hosting institution. Uh, and uh, you need to have uh, an invitation letter from uh, the hosting institution. The period can go, well, we advise to get a minimum of two weeks, but then uh, you can go up to three weeks, uh, one month, and even more, if, even though the maximum amount is 4,000. Usually we allocate 2,000 for two weeks and 3,000 for uh, uh, one month, something like that. Um, and then uh, uh, on the e-cost portal, um, there is, uh, there is uh, like a space, uh, then I'm, I'm not uh, really familiar with the application because I never did it, but there is a, there is a page, there is a space in the e-cost portal where you can um, upload the invitation letter together with uh, your, uh, let's say, um, mission plan. So you have to write uh, like one one page or half a page or something like that with, uh, with the activities that you have agreed with your hosting institution and uh, uh, with the period. And, uh, and then, uh, like, uh, there is a committee that is made by me, Virginia, and uh, George, and uh, we basically consider whether the topic is relevant for the action and whether uh, it is eligible, but usually we never, I mean, we never, let's say, rejected any application, also because we had budget available. And also uh, because uh, um, actually most of the applications were very relevant for the action and uh, very well described. And uh, yeah, so that's how it works. But maybe um, at the beginning of the next uh, uh, grand period, so starting from uh, 
November, maybe, we can share with all the community the instruction again so that everybody is aware of this opportunity. So, yeah, that that was just to right. so thank you. Yeah, it's, share it's with you. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. No, it's it's very nice because like uh, these these researchers, they just learn new techniques. Uh, they can uh, visit a different lab. Uh, and and see how it works there uh, they can uh, build collaborations they get to know the people so that's always very good uh okay and uh in the chat we have uh one comment from islam praha i have suggestion we could consider organizing an international conference or even a workshop focused on one of the themes from our project. So we already discussed the the workshop that will be held next year. So yeah, I think that's what might you might you miss the miss the information. Okay, so do we have any other comments, any suggestions um, to, to the cost section uh, events or for our future work? No? Okay, Brunella, do you have some uh, some other uh, things that you would like to discuss? Um, I don't think so because I basically covered uh, and asked you um, what is of interest for planning next year. And uh, as I said, on uh, September twenty third, there will be a management committee meeting online, and uh, we will, you know, sort of. Uh, take decisions in general. So let's say not, of course, on the topics, not on uh, on the contents of things, but how to allocate the budget. So if Lenka, you can discuss things, uh, Lenka, and, uh, you know, uh, within working group three and, uh, and maybe get a final, let's say, agreement on the fact that we join the annual meeting and the workshop uh, that would be really a good information for planning the budget for for next year so that's really a good input um and then uh, yeah i i i don't have i don't think i have anything else um and and besides i mean feel free to propose any and to raise any points that you think are useful also based on yesterday's discussion, which I missed, unfortunately. So I'm not really aware of what's really um, needs to be decided based on yesterday. So, but but if you but if you are okay, I don't think I have any other points to discuss. Okay, I think we already made some agreement that uh, that it could be held together with the annual meeting, the workshop, and. Uh, for the for the climate change uh, thematic that should be suitable for this workshop, but uh, also I will talk to Martin if he uh, has some uh, other suggestions or uh, from from uh, other participants. If we will have some some new information, then Martin will uh, talk to you or he will send you some some new information. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. And. Uh, Linka, let me um, thank you and and Martin for uh, for organizing this meeting, for taking care taking care of of everything, even where even if like uh, it was like August and July and it was a little bit difficult because everybody was on holiday. So really, thanks a lot for for uh, making this meeting possible. Really, thanks. And, and sorry if I couldn't be there. Okay, thank you. No, really. 
Yeah. Uh, okay. So my name is Clara, and uh, Lenka is uh, also here. It's the colleague from the Czech University of Life Sciences. I am, and I am the colleague of Martin. So we are both here, and it was some misunderstanding, I think, because my ah. name is Clara. But no, no ah, problem. Sorry. <laughs> No, sorry, sorry, sorry. And we understand why it happened. Yeah. It's fine, but... yeah, but we are we are both here, so no no problem. <laughs> yeah, I'm so I'm sorry, Clara. Since I, I didn't meet neither of you, then <laughs> but yeah, T today is it goes like that. Like uh like oh. I, I thought I saw Pasquale before and I did and then it wasn't yes. there. So <laughs> today is like uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. No problem. I think uh, that uh, that we can uh, we can finish this part of uh, of talking about the future uh, events and uh, some uh, some things uh, to the management and so on. And uh, if you have some uh, some points uh, to discussion of the of the yesterday's uh, presentation or. Some some more points that you want to talk about. So now, please uh, take your time and. Tell us if you have some. If you don't have some uh, any other other uh, uh, things to to discuss, then I would like to thank you for for coming for this uh, this event and. Uh, I hope you will enjoy your stay in Czech Republic and uh, we will see you in future on uh, some other meetings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Also, thank you for uh, getting online access to, to this meeting and I thank uh, to Lenka that uh, she uh, can help it here and uh, that technician that everything was okay and we can talk together with the people online and also here in present without complication. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Have a nice Bye. travel back. Thank you. Have a nice day. Uh, please, uh, did you uh, get the signature in the participant list, all of you? Yeah.